Hi there everyone. Thank you for joining me today. This is Deb from Deb Studio and I am the Poetic Artist. I thought today for my first video to be posted that I would just give you a tour of my studio space and maybe look at some of the products that I use in my process. And I will also explain why I call myself the Poetic Artist. So, let's get started. As you can see in the hallway here, heading to my studio, I have a lot of my paintings just sitting out. I know that's not good practice. So let's just go on further down here, some storage at the end of the hallway. And when we enter here, I have a storage unit for some paint and whatnot couple of tables for working. Um, there are six foot tables set in this kind of L shape. This allows me to get on three sides of a painting that I'm working on and over there is the studio supervisor. That's Tigger. He's inspecting everything to make sure everything is okay. And then of course my computer for listening to music or watching other artists do their work. It is kind of a small space. It's only about seven and a half by eleven and a half feet, but it works. And let's see. So if we look over here, um, the storage space I have for my paintings has little cubby holes, so I'm able to separate my colors, separate my heavy bodies from my uh, craft paints for pouring, and then down here at the bottom I have some other items that I use. Across the top we've got paint brushes that I don't always use but every once in a while I might grab one. That's one painting that still needs to be finished. The bottom part I just need to put in some more grass. And then another forest type scene that's got about three layers on. I'm trying to get that finished. I don't think I'll go over the different canvases today. Um, you really can't tell from the front side. It's more on the back side. You can really tell a difference. We'll probably talk about those in a later video or something. And that's another work in progress over there. I've got to get rid of that green because it just kind of throws everything off. I probably need to maybe go over it with like a purplish color just to kind of maybe blend in over here with this side. But I am liking how it's looking. It's really interesting and this was kind of just an intuitive to like painting inspired by flowers obviously. Um, some embellishments, got some shells here that I'm hoping to use probably in an ocean landscape or something of that nature. This little buddy here I use for storing my oil paints. Um, they are water soluble. I've only used them like once and I will say Water soluble to me is not the same as water mixable. So water soluble basically it allows that oils to be broke down using soap and water when you're washing out your brushes. And I mean you can maybe thin the paint down with water but it is so much easier if you use a medium. And if you use a medium then I guess they work the same as just traditional oils, although I've not used traditional oils. And I'll probably stick with the water soluble simply because I don't want to deal with the smell of turpentine and all that good stuff, you know, like in a small space. Um, stay wet palette that I don't always use. Some styrofoam plates for mixing paint. I have some gloves that I try to wear, other that I don't always wear them because I really do like how the paint feels when I'm finger painting, shop towels. You can use paper towels, but the shop towels are so much better, guys. I really like the shop towels. Um, they last longer. They don't, you know, leave behind like as much lint or whatever when you're wiping something off. And they're absorbent too. That's a big thing. All right, so up here we have color charts. This one here is a chart uh, that lets you know how much paint you'll need for to do a paint pour based on the size of your canvas. This up here was just a chart that I did to let me know how much I was going to charge for a painting so that when I went to an arts and crafts fair I wasn't trying to, you know, 
guess at what I want to charge for my paintings. I already knew because I had the list. This here is something I've just recently started doing. It's more like a color study to determine like what colors of greens or you know what colors I want to use in a painting. And when I say greens, I mean between a phthalo green or a hooker's green. And then with the blues, between Prussian blue, phthalo blue, and let's see, there was another blue, I think, up there too. Oh, ultramarine. I've just now started really getting into ultramarine. I didn't always like it, but I've noticed that it does have its uses. And, well, I guess that's probably about it for today. I don't see my color mixing guides that I wanted to point out to you guys. Um... But anyway, I mean, it's just a small space, and this is just a real short video. Um, hopefully, I'll get this uploaded on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and then I'll try to do this weekly. So, we'll go more in-depth in the brands of the paint, such as Golden, Liquitex, or Liquitex Basics. And uh, let's see, maybe uh, the folk art craft paints and whatnot. And then we'll kind of look at the differences that I have spotted between uh, different quality canvases. I've made it up to a level two. It's an artist loft, but it is a level two. Um, I've not opened it yet, but I have noticed a difference just looking on the inside. And we'll look at that more next time. All right, guys. I guess for now, that's probably going to be about it. I'm so happy that you decided to kind of look into my studio and, oh, yeah, so the reason why I call myself the Poetic Artist is I've written poems all of my life, and I just kind of wanted to incorporate the poems into my process, and then maybe I could use those or, you know, maybe release the poems on a single poem basis as opposed to trying to write a book which was a dream at one time was to write a book just have a book of poems and have it published i have written a couple of poems based on a couple of paintings that i've done this one here it has a poem written for it and then on down here this is a painting that it does look quite odd but it is special to me because I was dealing with something. So this one's a very personal piece. It has a poem written after it. And then, of course, I've written a poem to where I have wrote the poem and then got inspired to do a painting. So where is the one? Let's see. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. This started out as something else, then I thought of the poem, and the poem gave me the idea to kind of change it to this. It's still a work in progress. I'm trying, I want to kind of, I have like a misty feeling that I want to put through here, you know, and then the poem will actually explain the painting. So that's what I'm looking to do. That's how I want to incorporate my poems, is the poems will give the viewer an insight as to what I was thinking when I created the piece. That's it for now. I'm still trying to learn the video editing. It's a little more difficult than what I thought it was, <laughs> but again, it's something that's going to take me a bit. All right, guys, so that's it for this episode. Um, like I said, my intentions are to try to upload at least once a week more often as I have time. I do work four days a week and I think the editing is what's really getting on my nerves. I, I just, I'm having a difficult time with it. So if I can get this video pieced together, edited out the way I want it, then I'll get better over time and then might be able to increase the number of videos I put out each week. Anyways, thanks for joining me. If you don't mind, just give me a thumbs up for encouragement. I know this video is kind of boring. It's just an introduction and you're not seeing my face. I do promise I will get in front of the camera eventually. I've just got to get my smile fixed and then I'll be presentable to you guys. So thank you. Have a great day. Go out and create something and enjoy life.